Hello, hello. Welcome. Welcome to the social media marketing webinar. We're going to give it just a second and then we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, just some housekeeping updates. So in the chat, you're going to see that Jesus already put some information in there for you. So if you want to sign up for consulting, um, please refer to that information there. And then as we go through this presentation today, if you have questions, please put them in the Q&A, okay? Um, that way at the end, I'm going to run through all of the questions that you drop specifically in the Q&A. All right. So you can take a look at the links that Jesus put into the chat for everybody. If you want to let us know a little bit about you, what your small business is, get to know each other, that's great too. I'm going to go ahead and get us going. So we're going to talk a little bit about BizGap and the SBDC first, in case you're not familiar. So the SBDC, SBDC stands for Small Business Development Center. Okay, and we're associated to FIU. It's part of the Small Business Administration. We're a resource partner. And what we do is we provide free consulting. So for you as a business owner, that's really the most important takeaway. If you're a small business owner, you're launching a small business, we provide one-on-one -on -one consulting, training, and information specifically for you, and it's free, okay? It's at no cost. That is probably the most part, important part <laughs> that I want you to take away. It's free consulting for your business, which is an amazing resource because it doesn't matter whether you are early stages or you're a few years in, you can always use advice and somebody that is an outside perspective to help guide you with the different business decisions. So since the SBDC started in 2014, we've done over 119,000 hours of consulting. We've helped over 7,000 entrepreneurs. We've helped 446 businesses launch. We've helped people access $462 million worth of capital. And we've helped them secure $250 million in government contracts and 418 million in increased revenues. So these are some pretty impressive numbers and we are actually the number one center in the country and the state of Florida. Okay, so not even just Florida, the country. We are the number one center and there are over 1000 centers across the country. So you are really with the best of the best at the Florida SBDC, okay? We get involved in the community, we're out there, we're getting to know you guys. And BizCap specifically, um, it's the Business Growth and Acceleration Program. It's an initiative that F, that um, has run since 2016. And what we're focused on is similar to the SBDC, providing that consulting training and outreach for the small businesses. The difference is that we're focusing on a very targeted area. And I'll show you a map of that in a second. Okay, so the idea is that we're another resource for you to help you with starting a business and growing a business. Since we've been working, we've helped... Um, do five business launches, $670,000 in revenue increases, and help people access over $500,000 of capital. And we haven't really been running this program for that long, so that's pretty great. I wanted to show you the map that I mentioned. So if you are in City of Miami, Key Biscayne, Coral Gables, Kendall through Cutler Bay, in District 27 specifically, then you can work with us at BizGap. Again, the bottom line is that this is free consulting for you as a small business and not just in the area of marketing or social media like we're going to talk about today but you can get consulting in finance in um government contracts in business planning in retail like we have many consultants that all have different areas of expertise just to give you an idea um if you were my private client i would charge over a hundred dollars an hour for you to talk to me you get to talk to me for free if you sign up with the SBDC and with BizGap, okay? Just let that sink in. You get that level of expertise because I am an expert in my field and I personally invested a lot in order to become an expert in my field. And it's the same thing with the other consultants, okay? We really know what we're talking about. We have years and years of experience in whatever our core area is and we can help you um, through consulting, through training, through giving you that one-on-one -on -one um, guidance. Okay. So let's dive into social media. So today, what we're going to talk about with social media is how to choose the right social media platform to promote your business, what type of content you should be creating as a business owner and what metrics you should be looking also as a business owner. 
So social media is great because, you know, it's, it's easy to sign up for, right? Anybody can just create an account on any of these social media platforms. It's an easy way for you to engage with customers. Your clients might see you on social media before they go to your website, or if they find out about your business, they may look you up on Instagram or look you up on TikTok or look you up somewhere else. And you can create a lot of different content for your business, right? We have reels, we have videos, we have stories, we have posts, we have all these different kind of formats that you can play with to promote your business. I know that can get a little overwhelming. We'll talk about that, but you have a lot of options when it comes to social media and how you want to present your business online. Having said that, there are a lot of different places you can go, right? We know that there are a lot of choices when it comes to social media, and it can feel really overwhelming to try to be on all of these platforms at the same time, because the downside of social media is that you need to be posting all the time, right? That's how we feel. Like we have to constantly be posting on there. It's not something you can do just like once a month and expect anything from it. You really have to be consistent, okay? It's also a lot simpler than we make it, okay? The secret to social media as a business owner is for you to speak passionately about what you're doing and specifically why you're doing it. You need to approach social media as a way for you to let people know what it is that you're doing and why it matters to them. Why should they care? Okay, that's always the question I want you to have in your mind when you're thinking about social media for your business. Why should anyone care about this? Because I know it sounds harsh, but I want us to all assume people don't care. They don't. They're on social media. They're scrolling. They're distracted. Everybody's living busy, busy lives. Everybody's got a lot of stuff going on. The bottom line is they do not care about your business. They don't care about your product. They don't care about your service until you give them a reason to. Okay. You need to be able to express that to people. Why should anybody care about what you're doing and what you're selling and what you're what you're trying to help them with. That is the number one thing that your content needs to answer first and foremost. So how to decide on a platform. The first thing I want you to think about is where are your potential customers hanging out online? So if you think about your potential customer or you think about your current customers, where are they spending time online? And they may be spending time on multiple platforms. Most of us have more than one social media platform that we like and hang out on. But the goal is to kind of think about what the main platform might be. So here's just kind of a very quick breakdown. LinkedIn is great for B2B. So if you are um, servicing other businesses, it's also good if you need to reach decision makers, corporate employees, if you're looking for that type of a profile. Instagram is kind of a free for all, right? Like everybody's on Instagram for the most part. Um, there are a lot of consumer opportunities on Instagram. It's very visual, it's informational, and it's interactive because it has a lot of different things you can do. You have stories and you have posts and you have carousels, right? There's a lot of different ways that you can create content on Instagram. But Facebook is dead. Let's be honest. Okay. Not even like Coca-Cola is actively posting on Facebook. And when that happens, that should tell you something. But Facebook can be good for Facebook groups. Okay, so um, sometimes people will create communities on Facebook and Facebook groups where they're interacting and it's kind of a closed space for them to talk to their clients and talk to um, people that they want to reach. I think that it's best if you are a service-based business and if you want to have that kind of direct community or you're offering sort of ongoing services, then you might want to consider doing a Facebook group. The other thing that Facebook is good for is ads targeting. You know, at some point as a business, you are probably going to want to invest in paid advertising and Facebook is really one of the best options. We also have Pinterest. I don't normally categorize Pinterest necessarily as like a social platform because you, you're not really interacting with other people, but it is something that's great for driving traffic. And if you are a product-based business, if you have an e-commerce business, that might be something you want to check out. Um, I actually was talking to a client the other day, they have a travel agency and she's doing these blog posts. And I said, why don't you put those on Pinterest? Because that's the kind of thing people are looking for on Pinterest, right? Tips, advice, like different things. And if you Google, you know, um, a vacation spots or whatever in specific areas, there are a lot of, um, websites that come up that have created content around that. So 
is good for getting people onto your website. TikTok is obviously one of the newer platforms. It's great for discoverability because it's not as hard to reach people. The algorithm works a little differently than on Instagram. So it might be easier for you to kind of break through and get people watching your content. Um, it's really good for special interest. You know, people seek out specific little niche communities inside of TikTok. And now they've added a shopping feature. So if, again, if you're e-commerce, that's something you might want to check out is to have your products on TikTok shop because there's obviously a large audience on TikTok. And then Twitter, which is not called X, that is more discussion focused. It's more news, it's more opinions. If you are trying to be a thought leader or you're trying to establish maybe a personal brand, that's where I would go. Otherwise, as a business, I think you're probably wasting your time on Twitter, unless your audience is mainly on Twitter, in which case I would say go for it. But I think for the average everyday consumer or average everyday business, I mean, Twitter is not necessarily going to help you drive sales. So I want us to be mindful of, of the fact that social media does take a lot of effort and strategy to get right. It's not like a quick fix. You're not just going to post and then, oh, wow, I just have a bunch of sales now. <laughs> I wish that it worked like that, but it usually doesn't. We want to focus on quality. I want you also to focus on where is your sweet spot. It's better for you to choose one or two platforms and be consistent rather than being everywhere. Even one platform. If you can do one platform consistently, that's great as a business owner, because you're probably wearing multiple paths. You probably have a lot of stuff going on unless you have a team or you have help. Um, it's a lot of work to do social media. People think it's easy because it's like, well, yeah, just take a picture. And mm, it's not that easy. Um, the content takes thought. It takes um, foresight. You know, you have to plan. And so if you're going to put all that time and effort into it, you might as well do it right. So because of that, I would recommend you choose one or two platforms, depending on your goals. Don't go crazy. Okay. And these are some tips as a business owner, because you're probably familiar with social media as just a regular person, right? Regular human, but you need to put your business owner hat on. You cannot approach social media as just a regular human. If you are a business owner, you have different goals. So your content has to support those goals, right? And you're not on there just to be on there. Right. Social media is a great tool for awareness, letting people know that you have a brand, that you have a product or a service, but ultimately you want that to go somewhere. You want that to translate into potential leads, potential customers, sales, growth. If you're posting just a post, that's okay. But then I would ask you, do I really have time to be doing this? Right. Not every business needs to be on social media. It is okay if you make the determination, you know what, actually, this doesn't make sense for my business. I'm not going to be on social media. This is not a requirement for business success. And I want to make that abundantly clear because a lot of clients come to me and they're spinning their wheels on social media and it's time that they could be spending somewhere else, doing something else that would actually drive sales, right? So as a business owner, you have to keep that in mind. You cannot approach it like you are a content creator because you're not you are a business owner. So how are you going to be driving people to your business? At the end of the day, you want to drive sales. You want to get new clients. You want to get customers. Um, an easy way to do that is to make sure that your content is focused on the problem that you're solving for customers. What are you selling? Why are you the best option for them? What benefits are they going to get in their lives by working with you, by signing up for your services, by buying your product. So again, I want you to ask yourself, is this really for me from a social media perspective? Because a lot of us just assume, well, yeah, I got to open up a social media account for my business, right? This just seems like the logical next step. Again, I'm going to remind you, you do not need to be on social media not every single business needs to be on social because it takes a lot of time and energy and effort. So I just want you to be honest with yourself that if you currently don't have any sales, okay, if you're like a baby, baby brand, you don't have any sales yet. You don't have a full marketing plan. You don't have a lot of time. Maybe social media isn't the next step. You and I can still meet and we can map out what that plan is. Maybe eventually you're going to add social media. But right from the get-go, it's not necessarily the number one priority. I think 
trying to find customers in your immediate network is going to serve you more than just posting to a bunch of strangers on the internet, hoping something happens. Okay. Social media does not mean automatic sales at all. Um, so I want you to think through it when you are approaching social media. So if you are going to post on social media, okay, what are you going to post as a business owner? I think this is the biggest question. It's like, what am I supposed to be talking about? So it's going to depend a little bit on each specific platform and what it is that you can do. So for example, each platform has different features and different things that you can lean into. On Instagram and TikTok, you have to post video. If you want to grow, you have to post video. Um, even on Instagram, I know you can still post photos and carousels and other things, and that's fine. But video is what they're they're pushing from an algorithm perspective. So you have to post video. Um, on Instagram also, you can do stories, which is actually a great way to get engagement because a lot of times people will watch stories, but they won't actually really engage with your, your posts. So that's something that you can do on Instagram. On LinkedIn, now they actually have a lot of different options for you. You can do just text, you can do video, you can do polls, you can do longer articles. Um, if you're a B2B company, you know, you don't have to go crazy with all these graphics and things. You can just do a text-based post and actually get results from that. There are three main types of content though that I want you to focus on, okay? So when you're thinking about your content strategy, what am I gonna be posting? Think about these three buckets. Number one is the problem that your customers have, okay? So let's say that you... Um, are a company and you you help restore marble floors. Something that you might post is five reasons why your marble floors look dull. If you have a salon, reasons why your manicure keeps chipping. Okay, think about the problem that your customers have. Um, the other bucket is the services and products that you provide that directly solve that problem. So need help with accounting, we help e-commerce businesses get their bookkeeping in order, okay? Um, if you're a caterer, why Rosa hired us to cater her 50th anniversary party? You are seeding the service in this bucket. You're directly speaking to what it is that you offer. So in that example, why Rosa hired us to cater her 50th anniversary party? You could have, let's say this is on Instagram, you could have a little video and it's going to show the behind the scenes of Rosa's 50th anniversary party. Maybe it's going to show pictures of Rosa. Maybe it's going to show pictures of, you know, the setup and the food and the prep and all of that. You are promoting your services directly. And that's really important. And then the last bucket is what makes your business different. Okay. Um, maybe you have a product and it has a special feature. You could say, oh, our products are made using scratch resistant materials, or we use the highest quality ingredients, or we use, um, you know, naturally sourced fiber. I don't know. Um, if you are, let's say a gym, come experience a workout that you'll actually stick to. Maybe your clients come to the gym and you have more repeat business than typical, right? Or people stay with you and they, they do your workout program for years instead of just kind of coming in at the beginning of January and then disappearing. <laughs> You want to think about what it is that is different about your business that you can talk about on social media. Again, if you don't have answers to these questions, set up a session with me and we can figure this out. So when you're thinking about what to, what to post, I want you to also think about how you're going to position your business. Okay. This kind of goes back to the, the first um, thing that I shared, which is that we make social media more complicated. It's speaking passionately about what it is that you do and why they should care about it. So you want to speak the language that your people are, are speaking. Okay. You want to avoid what I call business speak. People think like, well, I have a business, so I have to be really serious and put together. And, you know, I have to be very corporate-y. You don't. There are no rules. You're making it up. That's why you're a business owner, right? If you wanted rules, you would not have had <laughs> the inclination to start a business, right? Because this is not for the faint of heart. So um, if you're out here and you're starting a business or you're doing it, you're not doing it because you want to be put into a box, right? So you don't need to be rigid. That's what I want you to understand. You need to be a human. That's what people connect with is if they feel like there's an actual human on the other side of the screen, that's going to get you a lot more than trying to have this very buttoned up professional thing that people can't really read. So 
if you're not comfortable with it, I totally get it. But the more that you can get yourself and your business into your social media, the more that people will respond to that because people want to support small businesses. People want to support local businesses, but they need to see the face and they need to see the person behind that. Right. And I don't mean to imply that you have to be on camera all the time. You don't have to do that. I know a lot of business owners don't want to, but the way that you're talking about your product and services has to feel like a real person. So I'm going to give you an example. A lot of times clients will come to me and I'm, I, the first question I ask is tell me about your business. And they start talking and talking and talking. And then I go to their social media. None of what they told me is on social media, right? None of the things that they told me are on social media. There's a disconnect that happens between when you're just talking to a person, just having a conversation and what you're posting on social. We need to bridge that gap. Okay. There should be really no difference. And a lot of times they're like, well, what do I say? And I'm like, exactly what you told me. Literally exactly what you told me. Word for word is what you say on social media. We make it more complicated than it needs to be because we feel like we have to perform and we have to be doing it a certain way. Okay. I want you to get that out of your head. The best content that you can post and the best messaging is going to be the thing that is the most direct and the most simple. You don't have to be crazy with it. People want that authenticity. People want that connection. The only way they can do that is if you as a business are showing up and reminding people that, hey, there's actually a human here. You're not a robot. So continuing with that, when you're posting this relatable type of content, you still need to be selling. <laughs> you still need to be talking about what it is that you're doing, why you're doing it, remembering your why from a business perspective. Um, that's how you're going to be able to be relatable and selling at the same time. There shouldn't really be a difference. I know a lot of people struggle with that. They feel like, oh, I feel kind of slimy, feels awkward for me to sell. I don't want you to think about it as selling. I want you to think about it as I'm solving somebody's problem. I'm helping somebody. I'm doing something that is, is good for my customer in some way. So if you keep that in mind, and you think that, you know, if I'm, if I'm posting, then that's going to help somebody at the end of the day, it takes away that feeling. Let's look at some actual examples of what you can post. Most of these examples I'm going to show you are from Instagram, just because it's easier for me to screenshot and share with you. Um, but anything that I'm showing you can be applied to any platform. And if you're like, I don't know how I would even think about that, book a session with me and we'll work through it. So here's some examples. This is Honest Company. Um, maybe you've seen them in Target. They have a bunch of different products and they were announcing the fact that they had a, a reward program. So they had this little video and it was like a text message going back and forth between two friends talking about the rewards, okay? Um, and so the way that they positioned this is they said, when, you're, when your BFF is always looking out for you and your wallet, okay? Head to our bio for more info and sign up for the Honest Rewards program. This is very relatable for their client. Okay, it's this isn't buttoned up. This isn't over the top. This isn't overly corporate. This is an example of that relatability that I was mentioning. Okay, they know that people like to share product recommendations with their friends and they know that people get obsessed with their products. And so they have a re reward program and you can save some money. Of course, you're gonna tell your friend like, hey, sign up for that thing, right? We've all seen those commercials of like the two people talking about the product. <laughs> the goal is to make it, seem realistic and not too cheesy. And I think they accomplished that here. This is another example. So HoneyBook is an online tool that you can use for business. It's a um, CRM um, software. And in this video, they were announcing a new feature. So the video basically just shows a business owner who's excited. Like basically when you played this video, she was just sort of dancing and she was excited. And at the top, you see the caption that they used on the video that says POV, you just found out you can get booked instantly on HoneyBook, okay? There wasn't anything fancier than that. It was a very short little clip. In the caption is where they do a little more explaining. And they're talking about how now they have this new scheduler block. It's finally here. It's faster than ever before to get booked and paid with just one file. You can now collect all the information you need upfront and allow your clients to schedule and instantly pay for their session all without lifting a finger. Notice how they're really focusing on the benefit. They're telling people why this matters, why this is good, what they're going to get out of it, right? Without doing anything, people can book and pay like that, right? Like magic. You don't have to be involved in that. That's obviously a pain point for their customer that's having to do all these little manual processes in their business. And now they just helped automate that and make that so much easier for you. 
So again, they're leaning into why this matters. This is a post from WeWork. And the video was basically just walking around this office. So somebody had their camera and they were their phone and they were just walking around the office taking little clips. And they showed the five things that you no longer have to worry about if you have a WeWork membership. So they were talking about like maintenance, tech support, buying furniture, buying office supplies, right? So obviously they're talking to a business that has maybe a little small office and has all these expenses related to that and is maybe thinking about going into a co-working space. And they didn't really put much into the caption because most of it was in the video. It said, you've got important things to worry about. We'll handle the rest. So it's letting these business owners know, hey, you know, if you join a co-working space, you don't have to worry about these other things anymore. They're not going to be your problem. That's all included in your membership. And so that's why you should consider us. Again, why should I care? Why you have to give me a reason to care about your business as a consumer on Instagram, as a person on Instagram. That's what they're doing in this. Here's another one. This is a local restaurant. So in stories, for example, that's a great place for you to announce special offers. If you wanted to do this on other platforms, there's ways that you can do that too. You could do a post about it on LinkedIn, or you can make a video about it on, on TikTok, right? You can talk about special offers that you have. On Instagram, it's kind of nice because the story is only going to last 48 hours, or not 48 hours, 24 hours, and then it goes away. So you can talk about something. So for example, this restaurant had um, huevos rancheros all weekend. That was a special thing. They don't normally have it on the menu. You want to keep people updated on what you're offering. Okay. If you're going to use social media, it's really important that you also think about how you're going to promote any sales, any specials, any discounts, because that gives people a reason to basically tune in, right? It gives people a reason to continue looking at your content and seeing what you're posting because, hey, maybe I'm going to find out that there's a drink special today or it's a buy one, get one free kind of situation, right? Um, the other thing I want you to understand is that it takes a lot of repetition, right? And this is where business owners get burnt out and they stop and they quit too soon. It's going to take people seven to 13 times before they decide to purchase that means you are going to have to post seven to 13 times. And that same person is going to have to see all of those posts, which is not realistic because people are looking at your stuff at different times before they even consider, hey, maybe I want to buy this. Maybe I'm kind of interested in this. Maybe I should try this. You have to stay consistent. That's why I'm recommending that you only do one or two platforms because you're going to have to put a lot into it before you start to see traction. And a lot of people get discouraged because it kind of sucks. You feel like you're just talking to nobody on social media. A lot of the times so you're posting things and you feel like I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. Nothing's happening. It's going to feel like nothing is happening for a long time. You have to be comfortable with that. Just know that it's part of the process. This is a company called greats. They make shoes. Um, I just wanted to show you an example of a business that is using the Instagram highlights. So you see the little circles on the top here. Um, underneath the bio, they have different highlights that are all designed to help them to sell. Those highlights are not by accident. Okay. They have community, which is people showing um, themselves wearing the shoe. So if somebody posted a picture of them wearing the shoe and tagged it, they're sticking it in that community highlight. They have um, a scene on. So if a celebrity wears their shoe, they're putting it there. Um, they have this little section called made in Italy. That's kind of their whole thing is that it's leather from Italy. It's, you know, made in Italy. That's part of their differentiator for this brand. And so they have a highlight just for that. Again, this is all stuff that is driving the person to consider purchasing this. Oh, okay, cool. These are all the different things that I might be interested in. They even have a playlist, which I hadn't noticed up until now, but that's cool too. You don't, this is another way of showing that there's a real person behind the brand, right? They're not too buttoned up. They're not too stuffy. Um, those days are over. People want relatability. People want to know that, you know, hey, you understand me as a consumer, even businesses. If you are a business selling to other businesses, that's the main thing is you understand me. And that's why focusing on why people should care is going to force you to communicate um, in a way that is more relatable that says, oh yeah, I totally get you. That's what people are looking for. Okay, another thing 
that you should be posting is testimonials and reviews. If you're not collecting those, you need to collect those. You need to make sure that you're following up with people, you're asking them for reviews, you're asking for them to talk about your product or your services. And then you can use this for social media content. You can use it as a video, you can use it just as a, a post, you can take a screenshot of something that maybe somebody sent to you and say, hey, people are loving this new line of um, hair care products I just launched, right? And you can, maybe somebody DM'd you something, you can screenshot, ask them for permission, post it. That's really important. We call that social proof in marketing. It means that other people like your product and like your service. And it's not just you, right? It's other people that are validating, hey, yeah, this is actually really great. Because most of us want recommendations from other people. And most of us trust you know, other people's opinions. And especially um, we're looking for that. We're looking for the reviews. We're looking for that to help us make those purchasing decisions. So the testimonials are going to help you make more money. So you want to make sure you're prioritizing that as a form of content, you can you can talk about it. And so in this one, this is HoneyBook again, this is that, that um, CRM platform. This person wrote the testimonial, it says incredibly impressed with HoneyBook so far, functionality is downright sexy, this tool should be getting more attention. They didn't pay me to say this, okay? That's a funny little, that's a great review, right? That's awesome. And they used that and they said, want to know what all the hype is about? For a limited time, you can join HoneyBook for just a dollar a month for your first six months. So they actually turned this into a selling opportunity. They they took this very positive, funny uh, testimonial review and turned that into a way to say, hey, by the way, for a limited time, you can check it out for yourself for a very low commitment, a dollar a month for six months. That's, that's pretty great. So notice how they're kind of killing the bird killing what is it killing the bird with two stones whatever i don't know you guys know what i'm trying to say um they're basically getting two Kill things out of this bird. <laughs> two birds yeah. with one stone there we go that two birds with one stone <laughs> it's like i don't know what i'm saying um all right so they're using this as a testimonial but then they're also using it to sell you more that's pretty cool this is a company that sells these little floor mats that you can um, decorate. So think of like a welcome mat and you can put these little tiles on there and it's kind of cute. They are using their social media to answer a question. So somebody had asked the question of how do I clean this thing? And so they made a video on how you actually clean the product. So that's a great um, type of content for you to, to, to think about is what are the questions that people are always asking me about either my product or my service? make content around that. Um, they also on the right hand side use this feature. It is a countdown. So they were launching a new line. And so they used the feature to let people know when that was going to be available. So that's awesome. Especially if you are doing something on e-commerce where you have a limited edition product or a limited run. Even if you were a restaurant, you could say, hey, we only have like five more spots for this weekend. You know, this is your countdown to book, right? I don't know if that really works in a restaurant. But let's say that you have a, only a certain number of slots for some kind of special event you're hosting at the restaurant and say, hey, you know, we're doing a pop up and we only have, you know, X number of spots available. Here's the countdowns for when you can call us and book your reservation. Getting creative with social media um, also helps. And this is what I mean by using the different features. Let's go to LinkedIn for a second. Um, if you are B2B or you're looking for that, that more... Um, corporate type of customer, LinkedIn is great. So this is a stylist and she uses LinkedIn to position herself as an expert um, and to solve a problem. So she posted about how you can get more wear from your special occasion clothing. So she did this whole um, little article about how, you know, you love this one piece, but it's maybe a little fancy. You wore it to a wedding. What am I going to do with this again? I'm a corporate woman. I, I'm not going to ever wear it again, but I spent the money for it. How am I going to get more value out of it? So she did a post showing you how you can restyle those pieces. Again, something that you might think would work really well on Instagram, but she's posting it on LinkedIn because that's where her audience is. Her corporate um, people, the people who have also the money to be spending on styling and the type of styling that she does, that does tend to focus a little more on corporate. Those people are on LinkedIn. So she is on LinkedIn. This is an example of um, promoting a discount and, a, and, and telling people about a special offer. This is a jewelry company. And so they did a flash sale. So that's great. 
If you want to do a flash sale on social media, promote that. That's great. That creates a sense of urgency. So they created a flash sale. They said for today only, you can get this necklace. Um, it's for $46. Originally it was 76. This is the code you need to do. Okay. This offer is going to end tonight. So you create a sense of urgency. You create sales, right? This is a post to drive sales. There is no other way to position it. That is what they're trying to do. They're telling you, Hey, by the way, if you want this necklace, you can get it for less than what it normally costs only for today. Have fun. So don't be afraid to post things like this. You're not going to turn off people. Um, if somebody is never going to buy from you, they're never going to buy from you. Nothing that you could post would ever change their mind. Okay. If they're, they're just not your right target audience, not the right fit. They're never going to spend money. The only thing you're going to do by selling is actually get people who are interested to buy. <laughs> That's the benefit of it. Right? So don't be afraid to post stuff like this. Don't be afraid to be more salesy, more quote unquote pushy. If it's going to help you get the sale, you need to go for it. Cause you're not in business to not make any sales. Otherwise you're a nonprofit. Okay. So when we talk about metrics, um, I also want you to think like a business owner and not an influencer. This is hard to do because of course we look at follower count and we're like, oh my gosh, we want high followers, but the number of followers that you have does not matter. Okay. It's the quality of those followers. You could have a million followers and none of them are buying. That's not helpful to you as a business. If you cannot monetize them, if you are talking to people and they're not interested in your product, then that's useless to you as a business owner. What you should be tracking instead is how many conversations are you having? Are people reaching out to you in the DMs? How many conversations are you sparking with people, right? Are people commenting? Are they resonating with what you post? Um, are they clicking on the links? If you're posting links on either Instagram stories or in TikTok shop, especially they have links, are people clicking? Now you want to think about that. Are people um, going to your website, right? You can set up tracking and you can see, okay, are they coming from Facebook? Are they coming from these other places? Uh, are people asking questions? The follower great, growth is great. If you are seeing followers increase, that's good. But again, you want to focus on, am I actually getting customers from this, right? Am I actually creating awareness? Am I seeing this translate at all? Um, I will share this with you. I had a restaurant um, that I was working with and they at one point were doing Yelp stuff, right? So they were posting, um, they had created Yelp and I think they were doing Yelp ads and they would actually see people come in. Like they could actually track it and they could see that when they were running them, they would have a spike in sales. And when they stopped, they didn't. That's the kind of metric tracking that you want, because again, your time is limited. And so you want to know, okay, if I'm putting my time and effort into something, am I getting anything out of it? And it might take a while for people to buy. Um, it might take some time, but I want you to think about that because if, if you're doing this six months, a year in, and you're not getting customers, either you're doing something wrong from a content standpoint, and we need to work on that. Maybe you're on the wrong platform. Maybe you're just not positioning things correctly. That could be the case. Or maybe there's other ways for you to gain business that you're not exploring that work better. I've worked with a lot of companies, especially B2B, that post on social media, but they post on social media almost like as maintenance, just so that people know that the business is still up and running. So maybe they post once a week, maybe they post once every two weeks, just to say, hi, hello, we're still here. This isn't a dead account, but they're not getting anything from social. It's more of an awareness thing. And that's fine. That's totally valid where they're spending their money and their time and their energy is on paid advertising. And that's how they're getting new customers. That's how they're getting new clients, but they're not just getting it organically from social media, just from posting. They're not getting much out of that. What they're getting is a sense of awareness and a sense of, Hey, we're here. And occasionally people comment and people leave things, but they've seen over time that they're just not getting much benefit out of it. So they stopped doing it. That could also be the case for you. You have to, trial and error things. You have to be able to switch gears. Um, the reason that we talked a little bit earlier about how social media is not for every business is because social media changes all of the time. Okay. I mean, who remembers when Instagram didn't have video, like for a long time, it didn't have video at all. And then it had video and then TikTok came out and then TikTok got really popular. So then Instagram said, Oh, we're going to do reels now, right? They copied TikTok. 
So things are constantly changing on these platforms. And as a business owner, you need to be able to invest your time and have a reasonable assumption of what you're going to get out of that. So if you're posting social media and you're sinking all this time and energy and even money, maybe you're hiring resources and you're not getting anything out of it, maybe that's not the best use of your time and your money. And you're only going to know that if you're tracking metrics, right? If you're looking at the metrics, if you're kind of thinking about the metrics, um, it's very easy to have inflated metrics and have followers. But if those followers are never converting into customers and that's what you want, then we need to look at that. Okay. Um, another way to use the metrics is to help you guide content creation. So if you're posting consistently, you can look at the end of the month or the end of the quarter and say, okay, what performed really well? What was my best piece of content? What was my worst piece of content? Use that to help you determine what you're going to do next. Um, because a lot of times we run out of ideas or like, I don't know what to post anymore. I feel like I've said everything I could say. Okay. Repeat yourself again. <laughs> You're not going to annoy anybody. Remember people need 17, seven to 13 times before they even consider buying from you. So it's okay to be repetitive. That's totally fine. But you also want to think about, okay, what's actually going well. Maybe, you know, you had a post that like went viral for you and it has, you know, thousands of views where normally you just get a few why? Let's look at that. Why do we think that is? Let's try to duplicate it. Let's try to do more content like that. If you see, for example, that your most popular post didn't help support sales, it wasn't really a sales messaging, then you can think about, well, how could I maybe transform this? How could I maybe use this for sales a little bit more? Or how could I post something like this and then immediately after post something more salesy because I have their attention now, right? This is the strategy and this is what we want to think through. Um, remember that going viral is not the goal. Um, I mean, that's awesome. If you are on TikTok and you happen to go viral, like that's amazing, but it's not always something, um, that is going to sustain you and is going to help you long-term. There are a lot of businesses that have gone viral and then can't keep up with the demand. So, um, be careful what you wish for in that sense. You want to try to have things that, um, are actively feeding your sales and not just like a flash in the pan and that's it. Okay. And remember that you don't have to appeal to everyone. You only have to appeal to your ideal customer. Everybody else is irrelevant. So let's just kind of think about this all together. This is sort of a recap. First and foremost, when we're approaching social media, you have to think about your message. What am I going to say? Right. What am I going to post? That's the first thing. Then we're going to think about it a little more specifically. Am I going to do maybe a testimonial? Am I going to do a video today? Do I want to do a carousel? Do I want to do a link post? Think about how you can take your message and what you want to get across and how you would actually do that in real life on social media. Would I create a video about this topic? Would I create a carousel? Would I want to do a you know an article? The next thing I want you to think about is how often can I realistically commit to posting? Remember, consistency is going to be important. So if you're going to focus on one or two platforms, be be realistic and say, okay, I can I can probably post twice a week, probably not more. I'm just not going to have the time for it. Great. So then that's your number, two times a week. You don't have to go crazy. You don't have to be on there constantly. You have to do whatever's sustainable for you. And to help with that, we have scheduling tools that can help you. There's Later, there's Sprout Social, CoSchedule, Planoly is kind of another one. Now with AI, there's even more tools and things that can help you create content, help you schedule content. And then the last piece of this is how are you going to organize all of this using a content calendar? The content calendar, again, does not have to be super fancy. It can just be a running list of, hey, these are all my content ideas. And I know I post Tuesday, Thursday. So here's a list of ideas. I'm going to just you know create some of these in advance and I'm going to post. Um, you can get more sophisticated with it. I'm going to show you, a, this is a picture of one if you wanted to think about it this way. If you're going to, you know, write out the different platforms, the days of the week, the different types of content. You could do this for the whole month if you wanted to. It's really up to you how sophisticated you get with it. But again, the most important point that I want you to, to understand is consistency and making sure that your message is actually hitting because otherwise you're creating noise and you're wasting your time. And as a business owner, you probably don't have that much time to begin with. So we need to make sure that what you're creating is effective, what you're creating is going to work for your audience and you're you're speaking to them in a way that is engaging to them. And then trying to find the amount of times to post per week that's comfortable for you, that's doable for you 
And that makes sense for your business. That's it. Anything else is icing on the cake, but we don't need to get too, too crazy or, or over involved with it. It's better to be consistent and to really have the content land. So with that, I'm going to take a sip of water and then we will get into um, questions. Give me one second. I'm going to. Okay, I see Annabelle, you have your hand raised. If you can put your question in the chat, please, for me, that would be great. I'm going to try to go to the q and I think I have to stop sharing. Here we go, Q&A. Okay. Oh, it just says thank you. Okay, well, you're welcome. <laughs> you're very welcome. Okay, Annabelle, I noticed Emily did not mention YouTube. I was wondering why. I personally like it a lot. I didn't mention YouTube just because I don't have time in this presentation in an hour to talk about YouTube also. Um, YouTube is great. I would say that YouTube is um, similar in a way to Instagram and, and TikTok and that you can do short form video. I think that's awesome. So you can repurpose that content and put it on shorts. You can create longer content, but YouTube is kind of its whole other animal. That's the only reason I didn't really cover it in this is just because... Um, that requires a lot more from the perspective of the business owner, as far as like recording content, having video. And I find that most business owners that we talk to are kind of in, in a place where they don't want to get into like the video creation side of it. But if that's something that you like hundred percent love YouTube, nothing against YouTube. Okay. Let's see Betty in a post, how many hashtags is enough for a post and are hashtags necessary? Okay. So, um, on Instagram, it used to be that the hashtags would help you find new people. Now on Instagram, the hashtags are mainly a signal to Instagram, meaning with your hashtags, you are going to tell Instagram, hey, this post is about this topic, this topic, this topic, right? So um, they let you have quite a few hashtags on there. Um, I don't think that you need to go crazy and have the full amount of hashtags. You can try it and see, but it's really going to kind of depend. You want to experiment a little bit. Um, do you want the hashtags to be basically thinking about like, how do I tell Instagram what this post is about? And how do I, I tell Instagram what it is that I'm trying to do here so that it can help, um, get this out to other people, but it's not really the same. Um, now it's more for like a categorization type of thing. So I think that hashtags are still great if you are local. So I would encourage you to leverage like the Miami kind of hashtags. If you are a local business, um, those are helpful because people still kind of search locally. Um, and as far as how many, I would say on Instagram, you want to shoot for maybe like between five and 10, 11, I would say is the max. I mean, you can go crazy and do the full amount if you want. Um, on LinkedIn specifically though, they don't like a lot of hashtags. So if you're going to post on LinkedIn and you're going to use hashtags, five is the absolute maximum. So three to five on, on there. Um, okay. Let's see. Is who Amy asks is Hootsuite a good tool to help with managing time? Yeah, it's definitely a great tool. It's another type of scheduling tool. Anything that saves you, uh, time from a scheduling perspective, you don't have to be going into every single platform. Um, Hootsuite is great. Okay. Rosario is asking, how can we have better results with reels? Okay. With reels, I would have to look at your specific reels and what it is that you're posting and for your business. So I would recommend that you set time with me so that we can look at those. Um, with reels, I think it's important that you keep it snappy, right? Um, with reels, it's it, the, really the first second is the most important first two seconds to capture their attention. But Without actually seeing what you're doing, I can't give you feedback. So please sign up with me and we can actually look at your content together and I can give you feedback. Okay. Here's another one. Can I tag people who do not know me, but I think they are in the same business with me? I'm not sure what platform this question is referring to, but um, you can tag other businesses. You can tag other um businesses on LinkedIn, for example, you can tag them on Instagram. There's no restriction for you to be able to tag another, another account. Um, sometimes they don't allow themselves to be tagged, in which case you won't, you won't be able to, but for the most part you can. Um, I'm curious, maybe you can set up time with me because I want to understand what it is you're trying to accomplish with that. Like what is the purpose of doing that? So um, just set time with me and we can talk about that. Okay. Annabelle. Okay. How best 
to how to best track changes in algorithms across social media platforms. Um, okay, so some of it is inside knowledge. Usually the platforms will talk to um, some of their partners and let them know like what's coming up or we'll give them a heads up about certain tools and things that they're trying to do. Um, as far as changing, uh, tracking the actual algorithm, a lot of times they will do updates themselves. It's not necessarily common knowledge. Usually people kind of piece things together. Like if there's an update for the for the app or they're launching a new feature, you can bet that they're trying to push that in some way. So they probably want you to use that. So if you jump on that sooner, then that might help you from an algorithm perspective. Um, aside from that, um, it's really hard to say specifically like, oh, okay, you know, this is what's happening. Sometimes quietly they will announce it and say, hey, we're updating a product, we're updating a feature. We're like anytime that that guy from Instagram with the glasses comes on and is like, we're making changes to Instagram. Like you can bet that that means the algorithm is going to change. Anytime they change anything with the platform means the algorithm is going to have to catch up, right? By definition. So I would probably suggest that you look at what are the updates that they're making? What are their proposed updates coming in the future? Any new features they're adding? Anything that they're tweaking? Because that's going to give you um, some information about it. And aside from that, in your specific industry or your specific area, you know, finding other people who um, are either, first of all, successful and seem to be doing really well and trying to figure out reverse engineer, like, okay, why is this account growing or blowing up? Like, what could I potentially do? And then also kind of staying connected to people on um, Reddit. People talk about this a lot or other forums, like, you know, people will say, oh, hey, is your content being affected lately? What do you think is going on? People will have conversations like that. Betty, do I use hashtags for other platforms other than Instagram? Yes, I would use them anywhere that you have the ability to do so. So you can LinkedIn, TikTok. Um, I don't know if you're on, you know, on YouTube, you can do tags and things like that. So it depends on the type of platform, but we can chat about that more. Again, sign up for time because I can't give you specifics. If you want one-on-one -on -one time with me, I will actually look at your social media accounts. I will give you feedback on that. Um, with social media too, I recommend if this is an area that you really want to grow in your business, that we set up multiple appointments because a one-time thing, that's fine. But social media is a constant thing, right? So we want to be able to track and look and say, oh, okay, I posted this and this happened or this happened. So I've had um, clients that have like one session with me in social media. I don't know what happened with that. You know, I can't, they don't come back. So I can't tell you <laughs> what went on with it, but I have others that will set up maybe a weekly session, right? Every week or every two weeks. And then we can actually stay on top of it and you'll get much more out of it. If you can make that time commitment, I recommend you do that. Okay, let's see, Rosario, what do you think about bilingual content? How should we manage this? Okay, I think there's a few ways to do it. Again, without knowing your specific business and what you're trying to do, I can't give you too much context, but um, I have seen accounts do bilingual content and they either do it in the same piece of content. So if they're doing a video, they'll say something in one language and then say it in the other. I've had people do like the same piece of content in two different languages. Um, there are different ways to manage this. So set up a meeting, we can talk and kind of see, um, cause I, you know, you can set up two different accounts, some platforms like YouTube. I think that's what makes sense. Like see, people have like an English channel and a Spanish channel, but again, let's set up time and we can chat about that. Okay, I'm going to go look over at the uh, at the questions over here. Let's see if there's anything else in here. Okay, Maria is asking, what platform do you recommend for a behavioral health agency? Um, Maria, I, again, set up time with me so that we can dive into it. Um, it depends on who you're trying to reach. Who's your target audience? Um, how do you make an appointment? Okay, so if you are asking how to make an appoint appointment, Jesus put the link in the webinar chat. Okay, so you can you can do that. And then I will reach out to you once you're registered and I'll send you my link and you can book an appointment. It's pretty simple. Okay, anything else? I'm just looking through here. Okay, so I think I've gotten most of the questions. Um, so thank you very much for being on this webinar today. 
Again, if you have any questions specifically related to social media or marketing in general, um, social media is not my only area of expertise. We can look at your website. Um, my specialty is really in positioning and the language that you use to help people understand what it is that you are trying to sell to them. Um, that is really something that applies to most um, different marketing, whether you're doing paid, whether you're doing social media, whether you're doing you know your website, but that is really my my specialty and my background. So I'm happy to help you with that. If you don't know where to start with marketing, if you're doing stuff, but it's not really effective, if you're not getting good traction, I've helped people write emails before. I have, email marketing is another thing. I have another uh, workshop coming up. I think it's next week. Um, Jesus, keep me honest. I'm pretty sure it's next week. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of different areas that I can help support you in. So I would encourage you to sign up again, free consulting. And it's not just me. We have consultants that have a lot of different areas of expertise. So um, this is a great resource to you as a business owner. So thank you very much for your time and attention. And I'm going to go ahead and close out the webinar and hope you guys have a great day. Bye-bye.